Hi everyone, and welcome back to my attempt at creating an altered book art journal. So, the last time we saw this, it was about to go into the air dryer. The era? The, the cupboard that has the hot water heater in. And uh, to get dry. So I glued up all the pages, and as you can see, the book is now kind of destroyed. I left it like this, so I thought the pages would dry out and it warped over a couple of days and now the cover is completely curved everything is like out of line and I don't think it's going to be very nice to draw on seeing as it's very wobbly so I've learnt that lesson and I'm not sure if I can use this now what I'm going to try and do is pop it under some really heavy books for like two weeks and hopefully it flattens out and I can use it again. I'm not to worry because while I was looking for some kind of cool stuff to stick in the books I found this really awesome book in a charity shop. It's kind of like a travel guide to London but it has amazing cool pages with really awesome pictures in. I really wish I'd read it before I'd start ripping the pages out because it's got some awesome it's got some really cool um, like places in London to go. So I ripped out all of the pages in it. I'm definitely going to keep all of those. There were also some really cool like one page illustrations. That would look awesome as a backdrop to something. And the thing I really liked about this book is each page is kind of a little bit of inspiration. So with the previous book that was just words. I wouldn't really know where to start, like I'd have to think of something to do. So I think what I'm going to try and do is use this book, and it's so beautiful that I kind of don't want to do it. But I'm going to do it for the sake of an altered book experience and adventure, and see where it takes us. So these pages are matte, so they'll be, I think they're going to be pretty good to draw on and paint on. They're quite thin, but I don't want to glue all the pages together again because I learned my mistake last time and that's probably not the best idea. And also, I don't want to glue all the pages because they have such nice like, such nice photos on each page. So I think what I'm going to do is go through, pick a page that I really like, um, that inspires me to draw something and make something, and then I'm going to go from there and use that spread and kind of hopefully fill out the rest of the pages as we go. And I think it's probably going to be showing quite a lot of the pictures through and then draw it over. I'm not really sure. We'll have to see what I do. But yeah, that's the one I'm going to use. And it's even got this cool little strap here, which is pretty cool. Also last week I went on Etsy and I didn't even know people sell this stuff on Etsy. It's a whole new world to me. But I brought some um, music pages for a pound for this lot. It's pretty good. And I also brought a couple of like little packs for a pound each. So there's some stamps, some tickets, some like random stuff like these old cards and things. So I just wanted a little bit more, something a little bit more interesting than what I had in my box because a lot of that stuff is not old. Anyway, um, that's the new book. I'm um, sorry that I couldn't go into that old book, it would have been pretty awesome, but hopefully we'll see that again in the future. So what I'm going to do now is start drawing something, I guess. We'll see how it turns out. So some of these pages have really cool little quotes on, and I thought it would be nice to find a quote like that, that kind of makes me think of something, and then use that page. And even though there's so many awesome pages on here that I really want to use because they're so cool. I really like this um, little, not a quote, but it's kind of a, what are those things called when you did A dedication. A dedication. So it says, for dad who loved to travel the world but was always happiest coming home to London. So I thought it'd be cool to use a part of this quote. And this is the first page, so that might be fun. I might stick this page to here so it's a little bit more stable. And then we'll go from here.
So we're just starting off with some um, extremely exciting gluing action here. I thought I'd include this because uh, I didn't want to leave it out because it's probably going to get you on the edge of your seat. And here are some little bits and pieces that I'm going to pop in. So I have a page from that book that is destroyed. And some little bits and pieces from the London book that I have. And I was trying to find kind of like an interesting colour palette. So it's pretty muted. And there's some greys and greens and yellows. I'm trying to keep it kind of muted because I don't really have many other colours in my paints. And now I'm just arranging them in a way that I thought would look good. So I don't really have a plan with this page at all. Like, I'm not really sure what I'm doing still. But I just kind of popped them how I thought would look nice. And I tried to include some little bits that kind of have the theme of travel. So there's these stamps that have the trains on them, a little bit of a map. And then that little section on the left that says off the map, that I thought was pretty cool. A little bridge, which I don't really know what that has to do with travel, but eh, it's a bridge. And then I brought the old gesso back. I don't actually think I need to use gesso here because these pages are super matte and they're quite easy to draw on and paint on. But I just used the gesso because someone else did it that I saw on YouTube. So I figured, hey, if they did it, I can do it too, right? And I actually quite like it because it brings all the pages together. And then I brought some paints offline because I did have those other acrylic paints that I think I showed in my last video but I did try and use them and they're just really cheap and really bright colours and these were recommended online so I picked up a few colours I think I actually really like this colour palette I'm going to try and use all of these colours in this book so it kind of has a bit of cohesion Co cohesion cohesiveness so it comes together um, and I didn't realise some of these colours when I brought them are translucent and others are opaque so all the yellow and the red ones are translucent which is a bit of a shame because you can see the pages through them which is cool but also they're not opaque and I think it's kind of nice to have really opaque thick colours but you can put like that yellow for example over a white and it becomes opaque and then I'm just going in with the paints and like blocking out some colours and I still have no idea what I'm doing. That's pretty much the theme of this video. Like, I literally have no idea what I'm doing half the time. I'm just making a mess and having fun and experimenting, which I think is the whole point of having an art journal, is that there are no rules and you just kind of like do what you want to do and make a mess and experiment with different materials and stuff. So I'm just using this paint to like bring the pages together. So I have it crossing the pages and I have it going into the, um, the ephemera to kind of blur the edges and also pick up some of the colours. I'm not really sure what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> that green actually really matches the green from that map, which is pretty cool. And then I'm doing some little splatteries, some splatters, which is always fun. So I think this is like the base layer. So kind of getting down some colours for like a base to work on. So I had the ephemera and then I kind of put in some paint over the top to get some more colour in. And then I think I go in with some details in a sec. So I'm not sure if you can see there when I left the page, but there's like pencil drawings underneath. And what I did here was because the quote that I left there said, um, love to travel the world but was always happiest coming home so I actually took a picture of my building that I live in which is like a, an apartment building and I kind of mapped out just the windows on it so here is a map of all the windows on the outside of the building where I live And then I went in with my Edin 1800 pen and I got this in a scroller box like two months ago, I think. And I don't know why, but I just love this pen so much and I've used it to death. It actually broke, it didn't break, but the nib got so small yesterday that I couldn't draw with it anymore. And that's really sad. 
It's just a regular pen. But I just really liked it. So because this book is about the city in London, I thought it'd be kind of cool to have lots of like city motifs, which is why I'm picking the windows. Because it's kind of like a building, but it's not. It's like an abstract, stylized part of a building. And then here I was going to do like the window frames in each of them, but I didn't like it. So I just scrubbed it off with some water. And that's the kind of cool thing about drawing over paint is that it gives you that ability to get rid of stuff you don't like. If it was just on the paper, I'd have to like rub draw over it or something. And then I'm just adding some other like little square shapes to look like the window pattern kind of cascades across the pages. And then I'm going in with white gel pen and I think I go through like three different, I have five gel pens and half of them work half the time and the other half the time they don't work. So I always have to like go between all my pens to figure out which one's gonna work that day. So I'm just adding details with the white gel pen here and here I thought it would be a cool idea to like do a little Polaroid picture around this off the map. So it's kind of like if it's all about travel maybe there's some photos I could do. So I ended up doing this like Polaroid image and then I looked at it and I was like nah. So I rubbed it off again just didn't really fit at all but I did want to include some of that map in there especially because there's the word map on the other page I thought it'd be kind of cool so I kind of had painted over all of this map and it was really hard to see all the roads so I ended up making up some of it and then I took it across to the other page and I definitely made it up there because I hadn't I wasn't following anything I don't know who would have designed this city but they would have needed to get a new job after this I think So, so far this page is kind of interesting to look at, I guess, but it doesn't really, I mean, it's my first page, so I wasn't really expecting anything amazing from it. I kind of, going forward, I want to do more illustration work, like doing more actual drawings, but this was kind of just uh, testing out materials and seeing what the whole process is about. So I'm quite happy with how it turned out. I think it's like super muted, the colors, and maybe in the future it'll be cool to have like one colour that's brighter than the others or like a bit contrasty like I think some red would have looked a bit interesting in here because all these colours complement each other not complement they're like an analog analogous analogous all these colours are kind of very close on the colour wheel so this is quite harmonious but it might have been a bit cool to have like a bright red or a bright orange or something like that which I think I'm trying to do here, but then it didn't really go very well, so I added lots of yellow. And I think here I was trying to do like a cool yellowish sky, because in a sec I'm going to do some birds. So yeah, I ended up doing kind of birds flying across the pages, mainly because I thought it was missing something at the top, and also because birds just kind of symbolises flight and travel, and I thought it would uh, go quite nicely, and I'm quite happy with these little birds. And yeah, that is uh, my first page. So it was really fun to do. It was kind of a learning experience. I wasn't really sure what I was doing half the time, but it's just fun to mess around with paint and supplies really, and like put colors on the page and splatter paint and draw random lines. So after this page, I decided to take a um, class by Bai Bun. I'll put the link below. She does auto book and um, art journal classes on Etsy. So I did one of her classes called Creatures, which I'm going to show now. <laughs> that was cool. Um, so this is the first page that I did. 
and basically you kind of follow her along so it's kind of a lot in her style like these creatures here are not mine at all they're her 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 creation and you kind of just go along with it and I really enjoyed doing these classes it kind of gave me some more insight into the process so I'm going to take some of these techniques into the future and hopefully uh, next time I will have a few more pages done that we can have a look at so I hope you enjoyed watching that and seeing some of my experimentation and hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.